Distinguished uh, Deputy Prime Minister of Republic of Serbia and Minister of Culture and Media, Distinguished Mayor of Belgrade, Dear Belgrade Museum Director, Your Excellencies, Dear Ambassadors, Artists and Experts from African Countries, Ladies and Gentlemen. Welcome to the online conference Contemporary Art of Africa in the Era of the Pandemic organized by the Museum of African Art and Color Media Communications in partnership with the Ministry of Culture and Media and the city of Belgrade. At today's conference, we will have the opportunity to answer some questions concerning the impact, impact of the pandemic on the contemporary art, creative processes, new phenomena, art forms and contacts in the work of artists of African descent and those who create art on the African continent. Also, we will hear thoughts and experiences on how the COVID-19 pandemic affected cultural institutions in Africa, the work of contemporary African artists, as well as the themes, processes, contexts, forms and shapes in the field of contemporary art that this pandemic has brought to the fore. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to announce the special guest of honor, Mrs. Maya Gojković, Deputy Prime Minister of the Republic of Serbia and Minister of Culture and Media. Mrs. Gojković, welcome. Vaše Excelencije, uvaženi gradonačelniče, gospodine Radojčiću, poštovana direktorka Muzeja Afričke umetnosti, gospođo Aleksić, dame i gospodo, veliko mi je zadovoljstvo što mogu da vam se obratim na otvaranju konferencije Savremena umetnost Afrike u doba pandemije koja se održava povodom dana Afrike. Da podsjetim na današnji datum, sve to beležava dan kada je osnovana organizacija Afričkog jedinstva, današnja Afrička unija. Srbije je posvećena jačanju odnosa sa tradicionalnim prijateljima zemljama Afrike, a potvrda te iskrene želje je odluka da 25. maj dan Afrike zvanično obeležava kao dan prijateljstva sa narodima Afrike. Pandemija COVID-19, za koju se već sada može reći da je sve to nanela ogromnu štetu i stavila čovečanstvo pred velike izazove, bitno je uticala na sve društvene oblasti, pa tako i na kulturu. Danas ćemo imati priliku da čujemo raznovrsne iskustva i steknemo širu sliku o tome kako i koliko je pandemija uticala na savremenu umetnost ne samo na tlu Afrike, već i u našoj zemlji. Dama i gospodo, drago mi je što mogu da kažem da je Srbije među zemljama koje su na ovu globalnu opasnost dala adekvatne odgovore, pokazujući tako odgovornost prema svojim građanima. U oblasti kulture, pozorište, muzeji, galerije i druge ustanove u našoj zemlji, veći deo trajanja pandemije bili su otvorene za publiku, u spuštovanje svih epidemioloških mera. Na taj način kultura je još jednom pokazala da je prilagodljiva svim okolnostima, pa i onim krajnje nepovoljnim. Kulturni sadržaj u online formatu ili uživo u velikoj meri predstavljali su let za dušu i doprinjeli da se negativni efekti pandemije ublaže. Pored toga, Vlada Republike Srbije i Ministarstvo kulture i informisanje u dva navrata opredelili su pomoć za samostalne umetnike među kojima je bilo i onih koji usled karantinskih uslova nisu mogli da se bave svojim poslom. Država je time iskazala jasan stav da je kultura bitan element nacionalnog identiteta i svakako ne manje važna u odnosu na druge delatnosti. Dame i gospodo, iskreno me raduje činjenica da decenima unazad Srbije gaje prijateljske odnose sa državama Afričkog kontinenta. Ti odnosi nisu dobri samo u politici i ekonomiji, već i u oblasti kulture. U Beogradu se nalazi jedini muzej u ovom delu Evrope koji je isključivo posvećen kulturama i umetnostima Afričkog kontinenta, o čemu će svakako više govoriti direktorka Muzeja Afričke umetnosti. I u zbirkama drugih muzeja u Srbiji, naročito u Muzeju Jugoslavije, čuvaju se vredni predmeti koje potiču iz Afrike i koji su prikazivani na izložbama širom sveta. Preko zbirke i kolekcije muzeje i galerije u Srbiji, kao i zahvaljujući gostujućim izložbama afričkih ustanova i umetnika, javnost u Srbiji imala je i ima priliku da u dobre meri upozna kulturu ovog kontinenta. Ministarstvo kulture i informisanja nastojeće da publici u Srbiji još više približi bogatstvo i kolorit afričke kulture. 
Iako vezane za različite kontinente i društvene istorijske kontekste i dešavanja, afrička i srpska kultura imaju dosta toga zajedničko. Naši narodi vekovima su bili vođeni idejom slobode i taj ideal često je bio motiv umetničkih dela koje su stvarana u vašim zemljama i u Srbiji. Prava umetnost govori jezikom koji svi razumeju, šaljući poruke prijateljstva i tolerancije. Verujem da između naše zemlje i država, čiji su ambasadori prisutni danas ovde, ali i ostalih zemalja iz Afrike, postoji još dosta prostora širenje saradnje i jačanje kulturnih veza. Svi zajedno moramo razmišljati korak napred, odnosno šta ćemo raditi i kako ćemo sarađivati u budućnosti kada se život vrati u normalu. Pandemija je pokazala da digitalni sadržaj i online događaj mogu biti i jesu dobar odgovor na vanredne okolnosti, ali da fizičko prisutno i žive događaj ipak ništa ne može da zameni. To se pokazalo i pre četiri dana u Veneci, neizuzetno zapaženom otvaranju Srpskog paviljona na Bijenalo arhitekture. Dame i gospodo, kao što je uspešno odgovorila na izazove pandemije, Srbija je spremna da nakon njenog prestanka nastavi da svesedno podržava savremeno stvaralaštvo, čuva kulturno nasledje i jača kulturna veze na međunarodnom planu. Sa zadovoljstvom mogu da kažem da su afričke države među prioritetima u međunarodnoj kulturnoj saradnji naše zemlje. Neka i ova konferencija posluži tome da pošaljemo snažnu poruku da je kultura jedna, nedeljiva i da pripada čitavom čovečanstvu. Na nama je da jačajući kulturnu saradnju širimo i njene potencijale. Proglašam konferenciju Savremena umetnost Afrike u doba pandemije otvorena. Hvala. Dear audience and participants, a warm welcome also to Mr. Zoran Radojičić, mayor of Belgrade. Mr. Radojičić. Poštovana ministarko Gojković, vaše ekselencije, poštovana gospođo Aleksić. Zahvaljujem se na pozivu da govorim na otvaranju konferencije o savremenoj afričkoj umetnosti, koja zbog poznatih okolnosti, nažalost, mora da se održi u online formatu. Proteklih godinu dana su izmenile mnogo toga u našim životima. Lekcija je bila teška i plaćena je visoka cena, ali čini mi se da smo tokom ovog teškog perioda naučili jednu važnu stvar, da život cenimo više i da mu se više radujemo. To novostečeno iskustvo, tu životnu radost, verujem, možemo da primenimo na sve sfere života, a posebno na stvaralaštvo, umetnost i kulturu. 25. maj 1963. godine je važan dan u istoriji savremenog sveta. Tog dana je osnovana organizacija Afričkog jedinstva, zbog čega se ovaj dan obeležava kao Dan Afrike. Dan Afrike je odavno prevazišao granice Afričkog kontinenta, pa se tako ovaj praznik nizo manifestacija obeležava širom sveta, pa i kod nas. Zato i Beograd sa velikim zadovoljstvom kao tradicionalno kosmopolitski grad, obeležava Dan Afrike. Iz tog razloga smo danas simbolično ovde u Muzeju Afričke umetnosti i ovu priliku koristim da kao gradonačelnik predstavnice Srbije poželim srećan Dan Afrike pre svega prisutnim ambasadorima afričkih zemalja, ali i svim stanovnicima ovog prelipog kontinenta. Ovom prilikom bih takođe iskoristio da se osvrnem na još jedan važan događaj u savremenoj svetskoj istoriji, čiju godišnjicu obeležavamo ove godine. Pre tačno 60 godina, 1961. godine, osnovan je pokret nesvrstanih, koji je promovisao univerzalne principe jednakosti i miroljubive koegzistencije. Naravno, Srbija će značajan i ljubilej obeležiti kako ga ovaj važan pokret i zaslužuje, pa su s tim u vezi već počeli dogovori. Imajući u vidu i ovu činjenicu, moje zadovoljstvo je još veće zbog toga što danas među učesnicima imamo ambasadore Alžira, Maroka, Tunisa i Egipta, zemalja koje su članice pokreta nesvrstanih. Mi sa ovim zemljama, kao i sa mnogim drugim afričkim zemljama, imamo tradicionalno dobre odnose i odličnu saradnju na različitim poljima. Kultura je svakako jedna od tih polja, 
A koliko mi u Srbiji i Beogradu cenimo afričku kulturu, dokaz je i činjenica da je Beograd jedini grad u regionu koji ima muzej posvećen isključivo afričkoj umetnosti. To je nešto zbog čega su svi Beograđani, a i ja lično, veoma ponosni. Na kraju, organizatorima se još jednom zahvaljujem na pozivu. Svima želim srećan praznik i sve najbolje do sledeće godine. Živeli! And the special guest, of course, is our dear co-host, our friend Maria Aleksic, director of the African Museum of Art in Belgrade. Mrs. Aleksic, the floor is yours. Poštovana podpredsjednice vlade i ministri kulture i informisanja Republike Srbije, gospođe Ogojković, uvoženi gradonačelniče, gospodine Radojičiću, vaše ekselencije, drage kolege, umetnici, kulturni stvaraoci, Pozdravljam vas u ime Muzeja Afričke umetnosti i zahvaljujem što ste se odazvali našem pozivu da učestvujete u radu konferencije Savremena umetnost Afrike u eri pandemije. Posebnu zahvalnost za organizaciju i tehničku podršku ovom skupu dugujemo Robertu Čobanu i kolegama iz Color Media Communications. Mnogo je razloga zbog kojih smo odlučili da upravo na današnji dan održimo ovu konferenciju. U znak sećanja na osnivanje Organizacije Afričkog jedinstva današnje Afričke unije 1963. godine, 25. maj se obeležava kao dan Afrike u čitavom svetu, a brojni kulturni programi tim povodom su godinama organizovani i u Muzeju Afričke umetnosti. Od 2017. godine u našoj zemlji 25. maj ozvaničan je i kao dan prijateljstva s narodima Afrike. On je mogućen i da organizujemo drugačiji skup na kome će se uživo govoriti i slaviti bogatstvo i raznolikost kultura i umetnosti koje izviru na afričkom kontinentu, ali nezaustavljivo zapljuskuju i obale udaljenih regija i kontinenta pa i Srbije, pokušat ćemo ovim online događajem da barem delimično ukažemo na efekte koje je pandemija koronavirusa imala na rad ustanova kulture i na stvaralaštvo savremenih umetnika koji delaju na afričkom kontinentu. Već duže od godinu dana čitava planeta pokušava da se izbori sa nesegledivim posledicama ove iznenadne, neočekivane i nepredvidive pošasti. Ni Afrika nije ostala pošteđena globalne zdravstvene krize i nesigurnosti koja je proizašla iz nje. To je, osim na ekonomiju, privredu, zdravstvo i druge oblasti, duboko uticalo i na rad mnogobrojnih ustanova u sektoru kulture, umetnosti i kulturnog nasledđa, kao i na egzistenciju zaposlenih i nezavisnih kulturnih radnika. Mnoge institucije su ili potpuno zatvorene, ili su drastično smanjile svoje aktivnosti i broj zaposlenih, dok su izložbe, muzički i filmski događaj, predstave, otkazivani ili odloženi. Posle prvobitnog šoka usledili su intenzivni napori ka pružanju alternativnih ili dodatnih usluga putem digitalnih platformi kako bi se osnovni programi održavali sa minimalnim resursima, a publici pružio kakav takav kontakt sa umetnošću i beg i zastrašujući realnosti. Sa ponosom mogu da istaknem da je tokom prošle godine Muzej Afričke umetnosti, koji je, podsjetit ću vas, prvi i jedini nekolonijalni muzej Afričke umetnosti u Evropi, osnovan 70. godina 20. veka od strane Skupštine grada Beograda, upravo kao simbol prijateljske politike prema narodima i državama Afričkog kontinenta i pokreta nesvrstanih, Pored svih teškoća izazvanih pandemijom, ostvario projekat od izuzetnog međunarodnog i opšte kulturnog značaja. Naime, zahvaljujući inicijativi počasnog konzula Namibije u Srbiji, Vasilija Boškovića i njegove supruge Drage, imali smo priliku da neposredno pred izbijanje pandemije otputujemo u glavni grad Namibije, Windhoek, i potom organizujemo prvu izložbu savremene namibijske umetnosti u Srbiji. Izložbom Reflect, Namibija 30 godina nakon oslobođenja, Beogradski muzej Afričke umetnosti izgradio je most dug preko 7000 km kojim se otvara prostor za trajni kulturni dialog, razmenu i preplet umetničkih praksi između Srbije i ove afričke zemlje. Ni pandemija, ni geografska udaljenost nisu bile prepreke za unapređenje razumevanja i saradnje sa drugim narodima i kulturama. Pored toga, tokom karantina organizovali smo virtualni likovni konkurs za decu i mlade, 
objavili elektronska izdanja naših izložbenih kataloga, ali i realizovali besplatan audio vodič kroz stanlu postavku na četiri jezika koji su zainteresovani posetioci mogli da pretražuju od kuće. Trenutno smo u pripremi Afrofestivala koji će biti održan krajem juna, dok nas na jesen očekuje nova tematska izložba posvećena velikom jubileju koji se obeležava ove godine, a direktno je vezan za našu zajedničku istoriju i bliske odnose sa afričkim kontinentom. 60 godina od čuvene prve konferencije pokrita nesvrstanih održane 1. septembra 1961. godine u Beogradu. Kada govorimo o aktualnoj situaciji u Africi, važno je istaći da je u vreme kada se kontinent još uvek bori sa posledicama pandemije, Afrička unija proglasila ovu 2021. godinu za godinu umetnosti, kulture i nasledđa, smatrajući ih glavnim pologama za razvoj kontinenta. Tokom pandemije upravo su pripadnici kreativne i kulturne industrije u Africi igrali ključnu ulogu i davali značajnu podršku naporima mnogih vlada u borbi protiv širenja virusa. Osim toga, povećena upotreba tehnoloških inovacija stvorila je nove mogućnosti za razvoj ovog sektora, koji se uglavnom ubrzano prilagodio, preselio na digitalne platforme i iznašao nove modalitete za promociju umetnika i njihovih dela. Agenda 2063, koja je usvojena od strane zemalja članica Afričke unije kao nova dugoročna vizija i plan za razvoj Afrike, zalaže se za Afriku sa snažnim kulturnim identitetom, zajedničkim nasledđem, vrednostima i etikom, odnosno razvoj Afričke kulturne renesanse i podsticanje duha pan-afrikanizma. Na ovu temu govorit će u nastavku konferencije i ambasador Alžira, gospodin Šepšub, kao i ambasadorka Srbije pri UNESCO u Parejizu, gospodja Tamara Rastovac Sjamašvili. U ovom kontekstu važno je primetiti da je i Muzej Afričke umetnosti u Beogradu kao legat jugoslovenskog ambasadora Zdravka Pečara i njegove tadašnje supruge Vede Zagorac osnovan sa istom idejom razvoja i podsticanja panafričkog duha, očuvanja raznolike baštine afričkog kontinenta i unapređenja dijaloga između naše zemlje i afričkih naroda. Upravo u tom saglasju sa ciljevima koje muzej teži da ispuni i danas, nakon 44 godina aktivnog rada, mogu se pronaći i mogućnosti naše buduće saradnje i podrške zemljama članicama Afričke unije. Svaka kriza, pa i ova, može se pretvoriti u šansu i preokrenuti u svoju korist. To su pokazali brojni savremeni afrički umetnici, izvođači, ali i brojne ustanove kulture, muzeji, galerije ili festivali koji se održavaju diljem afričkog kontinenta, a koji su se, zahvaljujući mogućnostima koje pružaju digitalne tehnologije, uspešno pozicionirali na globalnoj umetničkoj sceni i prisutni su i vidljiviji više nego ikad ranije, što u svom izlaganju ističe i ambasador Tunisa, gospodin Ređeb. Mnogi novi muzeji i galerije otvorili su svoje vrata upravo tokom prethodne godine. Uvaženi ambasador Maroka, gospodin Belhaž, navodi čak nekoliko takvih primera u Maroku, dok neki, koji će predstavljati prava svetska čuda u muzejskom svetu, poput Nacionalnog muzeja Egipatske civilizacije ili novog velikog Egipatskog muzeja u Kairu, o kojima govori ambasador Egipta Algoveli, Bez pauze nastavljaju se izgradnjom i najavljaju otvaranje za kraj godine, što sa nestrpljenjem iščekujemo. Naše sagovornice, Deziredi Basen Nanuses i Blessing Bija Zubike, kustoskinja iz Namibije i Nigerije, uputiće nas u to o čemu govore umetnička dela nastala u doba pandemije, kako se ona izlažu, muzealizuju i kako se pristupa njihovoj interpretaciji. Veoma precizan analitički komentar situacije u kojoj su se našli angolski umetnici, kustusi, teoretičari i drugi, dao je Dominik Maja Taner, direktor vodeće galerije koja okuplja savremene umetnike. Zahvaljujući angažovanju našeg ambasadora u Luandi, gospodina Perišića, ostvarili smo kontakt sa ovim galeristom i kustusom, ali i sa mnogim drugim organizacijama i umetnicima sa idejom da naredne godine Po ugledu na već pomenuti projekat realizovan sa Namibijom, organizujemo izložbu savremenih angolskih vizualnih umetnika. Iz lične umetničke perspektive o tome kako pandemija utiče na proces umetničkog rada, na samo stvaranje, ali i na predstavljanje tog stvaralaštva široj publici, saznajemo na osnovu izjeva jednog egipatskog i jednog namibijskog umetnika, Mohameda Saudija i Davida Indonga. 
Kao što vidimo, mladi afrički kustusi i galeristi nastoje da vode razgovore i razmenjuju iskustva sa inostranim kolegama, bez obzira na to gde se nalaze ili stvaraju, i da trasiraju nove puteve za prodor umetnosti i umetnika sa kontinenta, svi zajedno aktivno učestvujući u njegovoj transformaciji. Na tom neizvesnom, ali ništa manje uzbudljivom putu, uvažene kolege, vrata Muzeja Afričke umetnosti su širom otvorena za prezentaciju i promociju umetničkog stvaralaštva i kulturnog nasledđa koje potiče sa Afričkog kontinenta. Računajte na nas. Na kraju, ostaje mi da još jednom zahvalim svim današnjim sagovornicima na volje da podale sa nama stavove i razmišljanja na temu savremena umetnost Afrike u eri pandemije, Sa nadom da će ona uskoro biti naša prošlost, a da će nakon toga uslediti lečenje kulturom, jer nema toga ekrana ili virtualnog događaja koji može nadomestiti doživlje direktnog kontakta sa umetničkim delom. Umetnost će i u ovoj situaciji pokazati svoju žilovost i otpornost, a zadatak svih nas je da nastavimo da gradimo nove mostove i da omogućimo neometan protok i razminu kultura, naroda i ideja, makoliko geografski udaljeni bili. Hvala. It is our utmost pleasure to welcome today also as distinguished guests the president of the National Foundation of Museums of Morocco, Mr. Mehdi Kodbi, as well as the director of the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, Mr. Rafael Chichukwa. And now it is time to hear the addresses of ambassadors, our distinguished guests today. His Excellency, Mr. Abdelhamid Shebshub, Ambassador of Algeria to Serbia, Dean of the Group of African Ambassadors accredited to Serbia. Honorable Madam Minister, Excellency the Ambassadors and Members of Diplomatic Corps, Mr. Mayor of Belgrade, Madam Director of the Museum of Africa Arts, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank Madam Maya Gojković, Minister of Culture and Information, on behalf of the group of ambassadors for being with us today on the occasion of the Africa Day celebration. Allow me to recall that as the Speaker of the Parliament, she had always been present at the celebration of Africa Day, which is also the day of, the, of friendship between Serbia and Africa. I would also like to welcome presence of Professor Radojcic, Mayor of Belgrade, the city that remains one of the symbols of the struggle for freedom and independence of the African peoples, and particularly for Algeria. I wish to greet also Mrs. Maria Alexic, director of the Museum of African Arts, for the efforts she invests to maintain the activity of the museum by organizing various events, despite the constraints of the epidemiological situation. I would like particularly to thank Mr. Robert Choban and Color Media Communication for initiating this thematic get-together on the occasion of Africa Day, and uh, Mrs. Maya Miskovic, who supervised the organization of this event. Likewise, the rest of the world, Africa was hit by the COVID pandemic. The impact of the continent was probably more severe than elsewhere, due to the fact that Africa has been already fighting against other diseases, such as malaria, AIDS, or Ebola, causing havoc in certain regions of the continent, but also due to lack of means and adequate health infrastructure, coupled with many other challenges, economic, security, and political, which the continent has been facing. However, the picture is not as leak as predicted by the experts. Since the onset of the pandemic, Africa has mobilized resources to respond to the crisis. The states were at the forefront of responses activities by raising awareness among the citizens about dangers of the disease and its prevention, and by reorganizing the existing health facilities to handle the influx of patients. At the continental level, the pandemic has demonstrated the authenticity of African solidarity and the harmony of African institutions, such as African Union or regional groupings. This pandemic 
was also opportunity of solidarity action between African states. In this regard, I remind that Algeria has sent medical aid to fight against this pandemic to Niger, Mali, Mauritania, Sahrawi Republic, and Tunisia. Today, we can say that the disaster scenario has been avoided, but much remains to be done to ensure protection to African populations against this pandemic. Allow me to address one of multiple impacts of COVID-19 on life in Africa, namely the consequences of the pandemic on cultural life, which is the theme of our today's meeting. I wish to remind that the 34th summit of the African Union held in Addis Ababa via video link in February 2021 has chosen for this year theme arts, culture, heritage, levers to build the Africa we want. Thus, recalling the attachment of our continent, of its identity and culture, but also enlightening the opportunity to heighten their role as a catalyst for development and socio-economic integration of the continent. In that context, the most important decision was the one of the Great Museum project. This museum will be hosted by Algeria in Algiers on behalf of the continent as one of the activities of the first 10 years implementation plan of Agenda 2063. And as a symbolic first step it was decided to organize the first continental exhibition in Algiers this year at the temporary site of the future Great Museum of Africa. The cultural sector of Algeria had not been uh, spared by, from the pandemic following the implementation of drastic measures to protect the public health. Despite the situation, some of activities in virtual mode were organized in 2021, thus making it possible to Algerian public to discover rich online programs. However, 2021 witnessed the reopening of theaters, cultural centers, and cultural space for the public, naturally in compliance with health protocols. In that context, several events were scheduled across the national territory with presence of the public, among which I would like to mention the opening of the International Academy of Music and Dance, the 14th National Professional Theatre uh, Festival, the exhibition Women's Creation uh, with uh, 70 paint, uh, painting. Uh, it was opened on uh, uh, 8 uh, of March of, at the occasion of International Women's Day. Festivities on the occasion of the Heritage Month 2021, and other exhibition, open, uh, open house days in new museums, caravan books, on the occasion of the National Day of Knowledge. But the most symbolic event honoring relation of friendship between Algeria and Serbia has been without doubt the second collective painting exhibition, Serbia seen by Algerian painters, organized in March 2021, which shows the beauty of landscape the richness of history and the depth of traditions of our two countries. In that context, I wish to commend the efforts of Mr. Alexander Jankovic, Ambassador of Serbia to Algeria, for his support to this event. When it comes for the forthcoming activities, we look forward to the 20th International Book Fairs in Algiers, scheduled in November 2021 after cancellation of the 2020 edition due to the pandemic. Finally, I would like to finish on a positive note. This pandemic has placed significant strain on several aspects on our life, of our life, but it has revealed as well that culture and art are one of few ramparts that resisted and remained vectors of getting together and one of the best responses to the social impact of this unprecedented crisis, disputing all aspects of life 
both spiritual and material. Thank you for your attention. His Excellency, Mr. Mohamed Amin Belhaj, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Morocco to Serbia. Mrs. Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Cultural Information, Mr. Mayor, Mrs. Director of the Museum of African Art, thank you for your kind invitation to take part in today's conference on the contemporary art of Africa in the era of the pandemic, to share with the esteemed audience my opinion on this matter. The spread of the coronavirus pandemic has hit the cultural and artistic sector really hard seen most, uh, if not all, shows, theatrical performances, film screenings, plastic art vernissages, and book signing were suspended to comply with health protection measures against the spread of coronavirus. COVID-19 pandemic pushed cultural operators to rethink their modus operandi. They found themselves forced to explore and associate their work with new technologies, giving rise to the development of new information and communication technologies related to support this unprecedented, intensive and much needed digitalization process. We all agree that culture and art are conveyed first and foremost through human relations and interactions. But due to the restrictions linked to COVID-19, Moroccan artists, for the most part, have continued to work and to be creative by adapting their content to the digital format. While some artists suffered from the negative impacts of the pandemic, particularly when it comes to their financial income, others believe that the resulting lockdown has been a real catalyst for their creativity. This break has allowed several artists to focus on, focus on their work, be it sculpture, painting, music or theatre, to find new ideas and subjects to explore for works they can present or exhibit as soon as the restrictions are lifted. Furthermore, during this period of pandemic, Morocco has proven to be a real model when it comes to the promotion of culture by showing to the world that it is possible to reconcile culture and health. Our Moroccan expert, the president of the National Foundation of the Museums of Morocco, Mr. Mehdi Qutbi, who is present with us today at this conference, could elaborate more on that. The Moroccan public can now visit museums to admire the exhibited works in accordance with the rules and requirements imposed by the health authorities. Also, it should be noted that the cultural scene in Morocco is experiencing an unprecedented effervescence with the opening of several museums, including the Villa Harris Museum in Tangier, the Music Museum in Meknes, and the start of construction work on the Judaism Museum in Fez, among several other projects which highlight the rich, diverse cultural and spiritual heritage of the kingdom. In the end, I would like to add that regardless of the numerous challenges met by the artists and by all of us for the past year, this global pandemic has certainly been favorable for reflecting on our approach to life and on our relationships with each other. These hard times enable us to understand what we have been taken for granted and to show solidarity to, do, to those who are most impacted by the pandemic, not only on the material level, but also on the emotional one. Thank you once again for this kind invitation and I wish you a happy Africa Day. And now I would like to invite you to watch a short video entitled Morocco as soon as possible that features 
some of the most beautiful sights from my beloved country. Thank you. His Excellency, Mr. Saif Allah Rejeb, Ambassador of the Republic of Tunisia in Belgrade. Dear friends, I would like to start by thanking the African Museum and the person of its director, Mrs. Maria Alexic, for giving us the, this opportunity of a chair through this online conference on the occasion of the celebration of Africa Day. May I also seize this opportunity to extend my special greetings to Her Excellency Mrs. Maya Gojgovic, Minister of Culture and Information, and my dear friend Dr. Zoran Radojic, Mayor of Belgrade. As you all may know, COVID-19 was a shock for us for artists who couldn't perform on stage, couldn't do their shows, as for people who couldn't go to theaters and attend shows as usual. The culture in general was among the sectors that have been deeply affected by the new condition imposed by COVID-19 pandemic during which were decided almost all in all countries the gathering bans and social distancing. Those measures sometimes reinforced, sometimes elevated, have influenced the productivity of artists and thus had a direct impact on their creativity and the evolution of the contemporary art in general. In Tunisia, since the first lockdown, 700 shows have been postponed and all cultural institutions and library have been closed. Priority then was given to intensify online cultural offers by establishing an artistic program that people could still enjoy from their homes, including conferences, shows, plays, concerts, and virtual visits to art galleries. This offer served a double role, providing a cultural content to a larger segment of not only local society, but also of international one and mitigate the effect of pandemic, especially during the period of lockdown. Indeed, since then, the cultural offer in Tunisia became much more diversified and more than ever available. The large public is able now to reach any kind of cultural content, whatever its intellectual level may be. Writers, painters, singers, dancers, and lecturers were suddenly convinced by the imperative necessity of digitalization of their production or activities. Hence, they ran for being closer to the public through YouTube channels and all types of social networks. Briefly, Let's say that COVID-19 contributed to the democratization of culture. Besides, and building on their consciousness about their influence on public, a lot of artists like actors and singers stood individually behind the measures undertaken to fight COVID-19 through awareness campaigns supported by government. The closing of national borders has drastically reduced the incomes of tourism and thus and thus had repercussions on world heritage sites and cultural creators and workers. The big number of cultural com companies was also affected and the whole situation invaded the necessity of affording social protection to artists and the implementation of new economic models. The crisis has furthermore pushed us to tackle better the fragility of museums and to go immediately through the digitalization of their components. Meanwhile, the civil society joined the efforts deployed by the government, whether on national basis or on multilateral one, to discuss possibility of protecting the artistic sector and offer the new and different opportunities to develop it according to the new context imposed by COVID-19. Young people thirsty for art after a long period of lockdown worked for opening spaces far from the cities where together enjoying watching movies, organizing intellectual debates, playing different concerts and shows. It is important to mention that since the beginning of the health crisis, the Tunisian government represented on in its ministry of cultural affairs was deeply focused on the multilateral level on the crucial and, and the essential role of arts, culture and heritage in the management of COVID-19 crisis on the socio-economic level and on the cultural landscape in 
the country. Through its permanent mission to the UNESCO Tunisia contributed in developing an action plan in order to support the sector, including measures of social protection aiming to reduce the impact of COVID-19 on culture professionals. Thank you. His Excellency, Mr. Amr al Guveli, Ambassador of Egypt to Serbia. First, let me congratulate uh, the Museum of African Art, Madame Maria Alexic, for this uh, initiative uh, to convene this conference, this virtual conference on contemporary African art uh, in the age of the epidemic. It's uh, an important uh, conference, but it, it even assumes more importance uh, as it commemorates the Africa Day, the 25th of May. It commemorates the African-Serbian Friendship Day, uh, which coincides um, with that important occasion. And one of the best ways to um, celebrate uh, the African-Serbian friendship is through art, through culture. So this conference is most timely. I'd like to uh, send um, and extend high greetings to the high participants of this conference, uh, Her Excellency Madame Maya Bojkovic, Minister of Culture and Information, um, and of course the Honorable Mayor of uh, Belgrade, Mr. Jorna uh, Zoran Radijic. Um, the mere fact uh, that um, this conference is held under the patronage, the auspices um, of the Ministry of Culture and Information and the City of Belgrade speaks and speaks very loudly uh, for how solid, uh, how close the uh, Serbian-African friendship uh, is. Um, and I will try to uh, maybe uh, summarize our view of um, African arts in the age of the epidemic um, in maybe three C's just for us to uh, remember it um, uh, easily. And um, by doing so, I would like to actually invite you for um, um, uh, maybe a visit, a tour, a journey into our residence, the residence of Egypt, which is the residence of also uh, Egyptian-Serbian friendship, the residence of um, African-Serbian uh, friendship. Um, and I'll invite you to take a tour to discover the three C's, the three C's that relate to uh, contemporary art in the um, age of the epidemic. So the first C is connectivity. Connectivity in the wider sense of the word, meaning um, um, uh, virtualization, making art virtual, but also connectivity means um, extending uh, to networks of, um, uh, of contacts and to organizing events that are um, online to bring the community of culture, the community of contemporary art uh, together. And as we say in every crisis, well, crisis is also a C, in every crisis is an opportunity. And this crisis of the epidemic has shown us the potential of the utilization of information and communication technology in the service of humanity in general, but particularly here in the service of culture um, and even more narrowly in the service of contemporary art. So um, the digitalization of the content uh, of contemporary art um, has proven as an effective uh, method to reach out to wider audiences and to overcome the restrictions related to uh, COVID-19 uh, and the pandemic. Well, COVID-19 is another C. So the second C uh, would be conversions. Because of the uh, restrictions and the challenges that the epidemic um, has uh, forced on all of us, uh, we had to converge different forms of art, we had to converge different forms of communication, we had to converge even different forms of convention, um, of convening. Sometimes we meet online only, sometimes in, in presence or physically or in situ, and sometimes in hybrid. So convergence of different forms of art, of different forms of culture, um, has I think been um, an important um, uh, feature to discover and to explore its potential um, and probably will also enhance our ability to reach out to um, the community of art and of culture um, in better way and in diversified uh, channels um, and through different uh, mediums. So convergence, the second C, is, was also an essential uh, pillar of uh, facing the pandemic. The third C and the last one is construction. And some of you may say, but what does construction have to do with contemporary art in the age of epidemic? Well, to some extent, um, the relatively slower um, pace of events and surely in situ events has given us a breathing space where we could um, restore, renovate or even construct 
uh, new spaces um, and new institutions for uh, contemporary art and for culture. Let me give you the example um, of Egypt. Um, in the last two uh, years, which now unfortunately the epidemic has lasted with us for two years, uh, we have finished the construction of the new um, museum, uh, National Museum for Egyptian Civilization. I'm sure you, uh, many of you would have watched this magnificent um, parade of royal uh, mummies going from their old city into their new city in the new museum. We're almost finalized the uh, construction of the Grand Egyptian Museum, the largest largest museum in the world uh, devoted to one era of civilization, but also in Sharm el-Sheikh and um, Hurghada we open uh, two new museums, one in each of those two uh, resort cities. So construction and renovation and restoration and devoting uh, the time and that's breathing space uh, to complete um, um, uh, projects that were not uh, finalized or even to start and to uh, achieve uh, new projects um, was an important um, achievement, at least for Egypt and I'm sure for other countries of the world uh, as well. So construction is the third C. I hope you did enjoy uh, this uh, tour um, to discover the importance of the three C's um, in dealing with contemporary African arts um, in the age of the epidemic. First C, connectivity. Second C, construction. The third C, conversions. Um, and I think we discovered how important those three concepts, those three notions, uh, those three um, principles and pillars are for maintaining the contribution of contemporary art. Well, maybe contemporary could be the fourth C and even culture would be the fifth C. So um, the importance of um, resilience for contemporary art uh, to survive and even to flourish in the age of the epidemic. Uh, we started from the Mashrabeya Saloon, this Mashrabeya which is um, um, a feature of um, um, Arab African Islamic architecture. Uh, we concluded here. We wish you um, all the best for the promotion of Serbian Egyptian uh, and Serbian African uh, friendship and solidarity. Um, and contemporary art through those three C's uh, can be a major avenue, a major uh, channel. Uh, for um, the resilience of culture in the age of the pandemic. Her Excellency Tamara Rastovac, Siam Shvili, Ambassador of the Republic of Serbia to UNESCO in Paris. Sa velikim zadovoljstvom prihvatila sam poziv Muzeja Afričke umetnosti i Color Media Communication za učešće na virtualnoj konferenciji koja se održava u sklopu obeležavanja 25. maja to je Dana Afrike, koji se u Republici Srbije od 2017. godine proslavlja kao dan prijateljstva sa narodima Afrike. I u tom kontekstu htela sam da iskoristim ovu priliku da vam u kratkim crtama približim aktivnosti UNESCO od značaja za Afriku. Naime, uz rodnu ravnopravnost, prioritet Afrika je jedan od dva globalna prioriteta u radu organizacije. I sve aktivnosti UNESCO sagledavaju se u sklopu nastojanja da organizacija u skokuju svoje nadležnosti jasnom i ciljanom strategijom pomogne aktivnosti od važnosti pre svega za članice sa Afričkog kontinenta kojih ima 54. I u tom kontekstu bi trebalo posmatrati i Nedelju Afrike koja se UNESCO svake godine održava 25. maja ili kraje maja, a koja se sastoji od niza naučnih, obrazovnih i kulturnih manifestacija kojima se nastoji da približi dostignuća raznolikost i kulturno nasledđe Afričkog kontinenta. U ove godine, zbog sanitarne situacije izazvane COVID-19, ovaj događaj bi trebalo da se održi u dve faze. Naime, prva faza konferencije, manifestacije, bi trebalo da se drži virtualno u periodu od 25. do 29. maja, a na temu Okeani, mir i održivi razvoj u Africi, što će biti prilika da eminentni stručnjaci i naučnici predstave različite segmente aktivnosti u Africi iz ove oblasti. Druga faza manifestacije bi trebalo se održi uživo, naravno ukoliko sanitarni uslovi to dozvole, na marginama 41. zasedanja Generalne konferencije UNESCO u novembru ove godine, a na temu umetnost, kultura, nasledđe, polega, poluga za izgradnju Afrike koji želi. Kao stalni predstavnik Republike Srbije pri UNESCO, želala bi da na današnjem skupu istakne da je Srbija snažni zagovornik i podržavalac svih aktivnosti UNESCO od značaja za afričke zemlje i prioritet Afrika. Aktivno smo uključeni u promociju i obezbeđivanje vidljivosti ovog prioriteta uz argumentaciju da prioritet Afriku 
ne treba sagledavati kao nešto što je od interesa samo za afričke države članice, nego nešto što je od izuzetnog značaja za celokupno članstvo UNESCO. U svakoj prilici ističemo da imajući u vidu aktualne izazove sa kojima se svi suočavamo, posebno one izazvane COVID-om, UNESCO može i mora da ima aktivnu ulogu na afričkom kontinentu u postizanju mira i održivog razvoja, a u skladu sa agendom održivog razvoja i agendom Afričke unije. Imajući navedeno u vidu, Republika Srbija će se sa velikim zadovoljstvom i ove godine uključiti u obeležavanje Nedelja Afrike. Naime, naša stalna delegacija će 25. maja cirkulisati specijalno pismo, poruku ministra spojnih poslova Republike Srbije Nikola Selakovića, upućeno ministrima spojnih poslova svih afričkih država članica, u kojima ćemo još jednom ističi istinsku posvećenost Srbije, razvoju sveobuhvatnih odnosa sa Afrikom u skladu sa višedecenijskim tradicionalnim prijateljstvom koji nas paje. Takođe, na poziv Gabona, koji je ovogodišnji organizator Nedelja Afrike u UNESCO, u okviru skupa ću se kao stalni predstavnik Republike Srbije obratiti i predstaviti saradnju Srbije sa Afričkim kontinentom. A tom prilikom, to mi je posebno zadovoljstvo da vam kažem danas, će se emitovati i specijalni film o Muzeju Afričke umetnosti u Belgradu, koji je pripremio naš pomenuti muzej, jedan od koorganizatora vašeg današnje skupa. Sve ove aktivnosti se prekluzimaju kako bi se i u okviru UNESCO promovisala naša sveobuhvatna saradnja sa afričkim kontinentom, a Srbija predstavila kao iskreni i pouzdani prijatelj i partner Afrike. Još jednom vam hvala za poziv na učešće na vašoj konferenciji i želim vam uspešan rad. And His Excellency Miloš Perišić, Ambassador of the Republic of Serbia to Angola. Dobar dan i pozdrav sa jugo Afričkog kontinenta iz Republike Angole. Prvo želim našim afričkim prijateljima da čestam danas njihov praznik, Dan Afrike, uz najbolje želje za prosperitet, mir, napredak i blagostanje na cijelom Afričkom kontinentu. Također i mi danas u Srbiji obeležavamo Dan prijateljstva sa narodima Afrike, što svedoči o našoj opredeljenosti da sa našim afričkim prijateljima nastavimo da razvijamo i napređujemo odnose i saradnje u svim oblastima od zajedničkog interesa. Malo zemalja, ne samo u Evropi, nego i u celom svetu, može biti ponosno činjenicu da njihovi odnosi i veze sa Afrikom traju hiljadu godina, kao što je to slučaj sa Republikom Srbijom. Naime, naš sveti Sava je na svom drugom pokloničkom putovanju u svetu zemlje oko 1230. godine posjetio Kairo i Aleksandriju i tom prilikom bio primjen od strane najviših verskih i civilnih zvaničnika toga vremena, o čemu postoje i brojna svedočanstva. I mnogi naši srednjovekovni ladari su bogato darivali Sinajske manastire, manastir Svete Katerine i druge manastire, šireći našu kulturu, o čemu također postoje brojna svedočanstva. Možemo pomenuti i našeg grofa Pavla Ridjičko, koji je krajem 19. veka proputao sever Afrike i svoje impresije i utiske zabeležio u knjizi putopisa. Kao i našeg pisca Rastka Petrovića, pisca i diplomate, koji je početkom 20. veka posjetio u dva navrata Afriku, prvi put je bio na severu Afrike, dok je drugi put putovao po zapadnoj i centralnoj Africi, bio impresioniran civilizacijom, kulturom i tradicijom afričkih naroda i po povratku u Srbiji objavio knjigu Afrika. Također možemo se sedjeti, kako se to u šali kaže, i najvećeg svetskog putka toga vremena, našeg svjetskog putnika Milorada Rajčevića koji je po završetku prvog rata putovao po Africi on je prokrestario Afriku u uzduži popreku, kako se to kaže sa severa na jugi, sa istoka na zapad sve to sve od svoje utiske impresije zabeležio u knjizi putopisa i po povratku u Srbiji objavio dve knjige pod naslovom iz žarke Afrike Republika Srbija kao naslednik Socialističke federate Republike Jugoslavije jedan od osnivača je pokreta nesvrstanih zemalja pokreta koji je odigrao odlučujuću ulogu u procesu dekolonizacije i borbi afričkih naroda za njihovu borbu za slobodu i nezavisnost. Naša zemlja je o sticanju nezavisnosti afričkih zemalja nastavila da pruža pomoć svojim afričkim prijateljima i generacije mladih ljudi iz čitave Afrike su odpočele i završile svoje školovanje i studiranje na univerzitetima širom naše zemlje i po povratku u svoje zemlje 
dale značajan doprinos procesu izgradnje mladih afričnih nacija. Takođe i naši brojni stručnjaci iz raznih oblasti, skrađevine, ekonomije, geografije, planiranja, medicine i drugih oblasti su u okviru programa tehničke pomoći boravili u brojnim afričkim zemljama i doprineli u napređenju, odnosno rastu standarda i poboljšanju kvaliteta života stanovnika tih zemalja. Prepoznajući značaj saradnje sa Afrikom i ceneći tradicionalno prijateljstvo i podršku afričkih naroda, Republika Srbije od 2011. godine otpočela projekat Svet u Srbiji i omogućila brojnim studentima iz Afrike i svih nesvrstanih zemalja da se studiju školuju i studiraju u našoj zemlji. Imaju mogućnost pre svega da izuče naš jezik, da se upoznaju sa našom kulturom, da se lično i profesionalno usavršavaju i da po povratku u svoju zemlju doprinesu naprijedku svojih zemalja. Mi smo na te činjenice veoma ponosni i nastavit ćemo da u okviru granica naših mogućnosti dajemo doprinos razvoju afričkih zemalja. Imajući u vidu da najveći procenat avršnog stanovnistva čine mladi ljudi, kao i šarolikost njihovi kultura, tradicija, jezika i religija, možemo slobodno reći da kultura u Africi ima svetlu budućnost. Želim ovom prilikom da izrazim zahvalnost Muzeju Afričkom umetnosti, jednoj od ustanova koja vodi računa o kulturnoj saradnji sa afričkim narodima, uz želje da i u narodnom periodu nastavimo da radimo na onapređenju kulturne saradnje i kulturnog povezivanja mladih afričkih umetnika sa našim umetnicima. Angola je svakako jedna od najznačajnijih zemalja regiona juga i centra Afrike. Postoji dosta mladih umetnika koji su spremni i voljni da uspostave saradnju sa našim, sa svojim kolegama, sa svojim umetnicima sa umetnicima iz naše zemlje i mi ćemo se u narednom periodu potruditi da uspostavimo što tešnje odnose kulturnih institucija i naša je želja da kako u Angoli, tako i u Beogradu organizujemo susrete umetnika, kulturne događaje, izložbe i da uopšte doprinesemo kulturnoj razmeri Srbije i Angole. Hvala vam i želim vam svima uspešan on behalf of the Museum of African Art and Color Media Communications, I would like to thank all the ambassadors for their participation and for sharing with us their observations and experiences when it comes to the functioning of the cultural institutions during the pandemic and their adaptation to so-called new normal. Excellency is the ambassadors and members of the diplomatic body, ladies and gentlemen, dear fellows. As we commemorate the Africa Day on May 25th, we also celebrate in that day the National Day of Friendship between Africa and the government of the Republic of Serbia. The 25th of May for Africa and for the world is a historical momentum as we honor the founding of the Organization of African Unity and the creation of the African Union in 1963. That day is a good opportunity to reflect on what has been done and on what challenge we need to focus on to continue to ensure progress, prosperity and creating better conditions for Africa's economic growth and development. Finally, I wish that commemorations will contribute to further strength, diplomatic and economic ties between Africa and Serbia. Thank you. Um dia especial para Angola e para toda a África. O 25 de maio é uma data importante. Ela marca a luta pela afirmação do continente africano. É a comemoração anual da fundação da Organização da Unidade Africana em 1963 hoje conhecida como União Africana. Todos os anos, lembramos a importância estratégica que temos no concerto das nações. Somos o berço da humanidade, mas também temos ciência, tecnologia e inovação. Cultura.
cultura, história e tradição. Somos 54 países independentes e diversos. Somos África. Now, let's hear the artists. It is my pleasure to announce uh, Mrs. Desiree Dibasen Nanuses. She is the acting chief curator and collections curator for the National Art Gallery of Namibia. Mrs. Nanuses, welcome. My name is Desiree Nanuses, and I am the National Art Gallery of Namibia's acting chief curator. Hashtag What's Your Story was a project that we opened on the 9th of November and it ran until the 27th of March. This project was initiated because in a time of COVID, we knew that uh, COVID-19, the pandemic, we knew that we needed to help our artists position themselves in a global discourse, also on virtual platforms. And we needed the artist's voice to be their own voice and not the curator's voice that is telling their stories. Therefore, the initiation of this project was a introduction into what the artist wants to say about themselves, what they are comfortable putting um, on virtual platforms about themselves. And, it, and we were part of this process from beginning till the end where we said, we just want you to introduce, so tell us what it is you want to do. What is it that you would like to create? We didn't ask for a final artwork. We said, we want to be a part of your creative process from beginning till end. And when this project kicked off, it was so exciting because we availed our gallery spaces, our studio spaces, artists could work in public public art spheres, they could let us know if they would like to work on a public art scene and um, we got um, the, the city of Ventuk involved, we had permissions from them where the artists could execute their, their ideas that they wanted to materialize and um, we were a part of the process from buying the art material for the artists whilst they were creating they had curatorial support from the National Art Gallery and until the finished project we framed the work and then we set it up as an exhibition and in this process of them receiving the artwork and creating the artwork until the final exhibition their entire process was documented visually in film in photographs and everything was being posted um, on virtual platforms so it was never a situation where an artist um, was not present but it was more the artist who was the only one present in that moment who has been able to speak about their work, what it is that they want to say, what is the story that they want to tell, what is authentically theirs that they would like to put to the rest of the world about themselves. And the final videos that for each and every participating artist, which was 82 in total, the final videos ended up being a YouTube channel for the National Art Gallery that was open. And these videos you can see currently on www.nagn.org.na and um, each artist's creative process is there where they talk about what their idea was and then you are able to see that idea where they're able to create it and what is then the final product, which was an online exhibition as well on the Nagan website, which is www.nagn.org.na. Hashtag What's Your Story was an introduction also to public art in Namibia. We find ourselves a lot in places where we had to queue up, um, where the, the towns was empty, there was no cars, no people moving about. And of course, we wanted to find out um, how can we also help people with their psyche? We always look at art as a therapeutic tool, something that can help your mind, that can help you cope amidst a, a, a pandemic or a stressful situation or a circumstance and um, how art is used in, in therapy as well. So we wanted to introduce public art as a form of this to provide that platform where if someone is going through a situation where they are a, queuing up to buy um, their flu medication, for example, that they would be able to see public art and, and it would take them away to some other place. That it's not, they're still not just seeing and hearing COVID, but that they are able to experience something else. And that was why um, the introduction to public art was the first for, of its kind for Namibia with this project. In addition to that, what we realized happened is that artists really, they had the freedom. We didn't limit artists' creative processes. We wanted the artists to be able to create a large work, for example, if they needed to, and not be limited to a, a bedroom that they are working within, for example. So of course, we had situations where in the National Art Gallery, our studio spaces as they were available, the artist's creativity was fully supported, and we, create, we received really, really amazing pieces of work. And I would just like to mention a couple that I think is very, very important. I mean, um, when we speak in a time of 
decolonization and decolonizing art and, and the, the public spheres within which we function. The most important for me is that we don't just adopt and re-adopt the white cube phenomena, but that we reinterpret it most authentic to or most of, of stay authentic to what it means for us so that we are able to present ourselves as best as possible. So we make use of the spaces available, but then the artists and their stories came through so powerfully. And the one artist I like to mention right now is Davido, who we came to know him as a painter. He went to art school, he studied as a painter, but then he ended up working in a graphic design studio um, for the paycheck, you know, and then for What's Your Story, Davido has presented us with a work. I mean, the, the technique he's used is pointillism. Um, so it, it really looks like this pixelated image, right? And, and obviously we understand that it comes probably from where he's been, the type of work he's doing. But then when Davido was being interviewed for the What's Your Story, he said he calls them Mahangu brains. And, I, and because he comes from Oshivambu background, it immediately authenticized to me what he is, who he he thinks he is and how he's translating what he knows to his heritage and connecting that to the indigenous knowledge that resides within him. Another artist that I would just like to bring to the fore is Hage Mukwenje. Um, there was an iconic image that went around when COVID came about in Namibia about these young boys. Um, you could see that they literally eat probably off the, 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 the dumps, but then the boys had put on um, spar, a shopping, uh, a shopping complex plastic bags as masks over their mouth and, and nose and this was a image that was shared around people were like where are these boys we want to buy masks for them so it's a space where the pandemic happens and we are unable to even take care of the most vulnerable in our society and in this time when this image started going around people's humanity came to the fore people stood up and wanted to support each other and help each other and Hage repainted this image that we had seen so much on social media in that time and it is one of the works that is uh, that was um, sub, um, that he completed for the what's your story with these boys with these plastic masks and I, I think it's a thing that will remind us our humanity how we need to look out for the next person um, as much as the pandemic brought with it a negative it actually helped us be there for each other in a humane form as as human beings and it is amidst this time where I feel with this project we were able to present to the artists an alternative not only selling artwork physically in a, a space or physically on um, um, by the side of the road but that they are able to access other avenues to be able to sell their artwork and that in that that is how we are trying to create a resilience and a persistence amidst the pandemic so that this is our continuum this is our new normal moving forward even with the new projects that we are coming with we would like to keep continuing this momentum where artists know that it's not only a physical exhibition where if a tourist comes in and and, and doesn't see the work then there's no sale for example but that there is a way to have a continuum of sales beyond the physical exhibition spaces and I think it is also very synonymous um, with this conference where we can be from different countries but have the same conversation and I think in uh, in the time of a pandemic this is the, the resistance that we are able to come up with becoming more unified to be able to tell a story with different narratives and including all these perspectives into a whole. I will now read a statement by uh, an artist called Davido Indingo, a Namibian artist who has sent us his written address due to him being on a trip and not being available to participate live in this con con conference. An illustration is following, youth having difficult times selling Oshivambo traditional food or fukwa during the lockdown times. Business hasn't been good during the lockdown. It affected the livelihood negatively and pandemic adds to informal vendors' challenges. Why street vendors are hit hard by COVID crisis? Street vendors, market traders and market porters earn their incomes in public. As street vendors have always faced onerous regulations and punitive measures by authorities, including confiscation of goods and arrests. But now 
the imposition of local and national lockdowns to contain the spread of COVID-19 is threatening not just the livelihoods, but the very survival of informal vendors and their families in some places. Initial Namibia economic stimulus measures favored big business and the well-connected. Grants, training programs, and low interest loans designed to help more street vendors get established would steer support to Namibians who are less wealthy and more ethnically diverse. Encouraging this kind of entrepreneurship with its low entry cost is a small but significantly more equitable way to stimulate the economy. Street vending offers still more benefits. It enlivens urban public spaces and increases public safety by making streets more vibrant and welcoming. Promoting street vending can generate employment and help their own families keep people safe and create the vitality and committee that is the hallmark of the livable human cities. This was the statement by the artist who has sent this statement to our conference in written form. The name of the artist is Davido Indongo from Namibia. Now let's hear Dominic Maya Tanner, director of the ELA Gallery in Luanda in Angola. Here you are, you're welcome. Contemporary art of Africa in the era of the pandemic. Hello, my name is Dominic Alexander Mayatener. I've been living and working in Angola for 12 years now. For the past six years, I am founder of the art space Ella Spaslwanda Art, which in Portuguese means she, and is my tribute to women and the fundamental traits of being a woman. We are a leading gallery in Angola, working with contemporary art from Africa with a special focus on Angola. Question one. Did the pandemic change the way your gallery works or some ways of exhibiting contemporary art? This is a, a very important question. Uh, and this pandemic has come to show how much we are interconnected, both nationally and internationally, and the importance and impact each solitary act has in the collective. Despite being, I hope, in the exit of this pandemic, it is still premature to draw conclusions. But we can see that if the economic crisis had already caused enormous difficulties for Angolan visual artists, then COVID-19 and the obligation to close galleries, cultural centers, commercial spaces, and condition access to artist studios has ultimately created enormous financial problems for all those involved, resulting in fewer art, in less artists, and in the closing of, few, of the few galleries that exist ultimately causing a poorer supply of art and culture and consequently a setback in awareness and education of the arts by the public. The entire visual arts sector and ecosystem has been weakened tragically. Question two, what are the challenges and how are you dealing with them? Again, this is a complex uh, question, but I would say that our main challenges are two. On the one hand, in Angola to create new local audiences. We have to educate the local public who often still confuses handicrafts with art. I personally feel that there is an international thirst to know Angola, but we must create an even larger thirst within Angola, for example, for artists, Angolan artists, to study uh, the Kianda, which is the Angolan mermaid, or for Angolan artists and, and the public to get to know what Kalunga is, which is known, uh, it's a Kikungu word, which means the threshold between worlds and which was a term which originated during slavery. So again, I think we have a huge task to create new local public. On the other level, our priority is also the development of Pan-African research and dialogue. Hence, the project Angola Air, which organizes artistic residencies in Angola for non-Angolans. We want to contribute positively to the deconstruction of the often bad image Angola has and help put Luanda on the map, on an international trail that may even be non-African, but that may have an African reading and approach. Right now, not only is there a desire for foreign artists to come to Angola, but also a greater desire for collectors to acquire Angolan art. If we create a local audience, these works can stay in the country. And if there is a Pan-African audience, 
they will also be able to travel through several countries, more specifically between museums and exhibitions. Question three. In which way has the pandemic influenced the work of contemporary artists in Angola? I would say that despite the endless number of art projects around the themes of the mask and coronavirus, I think the pandemic has largely castrated the artist's soul and energy to create new and seminal work. We have seen the strong emergence of virtual exhibitions and sales, but now there appears to be a light at the end of the tunnel and we appear to be heading towards the exit of COVID-19 where artists are producing new and important work and galleries are beginning to reopen and show this body of work to a physical public. Recently, UNESCO, with the support of the Angolan government and the American Schools of Angola, has launched a pilot program on the African continent in Angola with a project called Resiliart. Resiliart embodies resilience and art and aims at empowering artists between the ages of 18 and 35 who we know have suffered the most with this crisis in terms of joining and or surviving in the art market. I believe projects like Resiliart, as long as they are supported by private individuals and institutions, will help to create a conscious trend in providing much needed training, best practices and sustainable support to artists directly. Finally, I would like the Angolan government to choose this negative moment and give it a very positive turning point giving top priority to the creation of a Museo de Arte Nacional Angolana, whose initials spell Mana, which in Portuguese means sister. The blueprint for this Museum of Angola National Art has already been drawn up. It assumes and gives protagonism to the social and pedagogical importance that the visual arts can have in the cultural fabric of contemporary Angolan society. At the same time, I appeal to the Ministry of Culture, Tourism and Environment in Angola to be somewhat of a pioneer on the continent by digitalizing national archives and creating a website that makes this collection available to the world with texts in several languages. It is my honor to announce uh, the address by the Joanna Taya, the Angolan artist from Lisboa. Mrs. Taya, you are welcome. Hi, it's uh, Joanna. Taya from Angola. Um, so in this uh, situation of the COVID-19, uh, these last two years, um, there was moments that um, affected, the COVID affected in a practical, in a practical and uh, emotional ways. Uh, the practical was that in the beginning, uh, a lot of uh, compromises that had to be postponed but uh, at the same time there was room for innovation and room for uh, uh, interaction globally which created uh, opportunities and I was able to to do some exhibitions along the way uh, collected uh, digital exhibitions um, and um, also generally uh, I always try to turn any situation into a positive situation. At one point, I, it made me a little bit um, frozen. I admit the emotional side of it was maybe the, the hardest at one point, which made me feel a little bit um, groundless. And um, But then I also realized that um, I had everything with me, in me and around me, all my circumstances. Um, I'm very privileged to, to, to have a space where I could create and uh, eventually, individually, independently of what was going on in the world, I could still create. So maybe the emotional side of this was mo the most challenging because I did feel dismotivated. I did feel like I lost a little bit um, of my, my goals because I always had I always worked, but I, I kind of enjoyed having um, uh, some deadlines and I enjoyed to have some uh, separation in between stages, which in the, in, in, I would kind of complete my stages with exhibitions. And in this time, 
they were v virtual and uh, virtual was a really good solution but at the same time it wasn't uh, the same experience it was kind of like uh, in and kind of an anum, anum experience i still think that the presential and physical exhibition has compl a completely different impact emotionally and uh, physically and uh, so in meanwhile, I decided to to study, to go back to study because the goal was to keep on growing and keep keeping on learning. So I managed to study, and that gave me a lot of uh, direction. And um, and I also learned a lot in the process of uh, how to to manage my time. Even I had uh, no deadlines. I made myself some deadlines, I made myself some uh, goals, which I, I achieved along the way. So looking back and in all this process, um, and also it's my personality that uh, I always try to, to look at always the positive sides and and rely uh, mainly on, on my, my attitude and in, on myself. So um, looking back, I think I did use the time um, in the most effective way according to the circumstances um, but I really look forward to be able to go back to to meeting people and uh, creating in, uh, with other people and also exhibiting and interacting with the viewer um, but uh, yes I did learn a lot I did I did um, two post two postgraduate courses <laughs> I managed to do two collections and I'm, I'm going to start now after this video another collection and um, yes and I kind of found um, made me reflect a lot and uh, found new directions where, where I want to where I was I've learned more of where I was so to give me room and reflection of where I want to go so in that sense, um, yeah, I don't think things are going to change so fast. I think this is something we have to accept and something we have to to um, just to take the most out of it. At the end of the day, it's it's up to us how we, we deal with the situation. That's how I think. Um, the COVID is going to be around for a while and we just have to be creative and innovative and uh, positive and um, just uh, keep on uh, looking at uh, creating goals and uh, and being practical in a way that's it's a discipline it's a, it's a mental discipline as well i think so thank you for <clears throat> this opportunity and um, for allowing me to share my experience and uh, I hope uh, you enjoy. Thank you. I will now read a statement by uh, Mr. Rafael Chichukwa, Executive Director at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, who also has sent a written address to our conference today due to the fact that he is preparing an exhibition, hence he was not able to participate in our live broadcast. This contribution to this conference comes at a time when the world is still in the circles of uncertainty because of COVID-19. Here in the continent of Africa, like any other part of the world, we got shaken and we are still trying to find our way out of this pandemic. Artists and cultural leaders' lives were shattered after having been used in Hopping in and out, hopping in and out of international airports, restaurants, exhibition openings, art fairs, and biennales. As much as artists are used to working in isolation in their studios, but the fact that many exhibitions and programs got put on hold, it meant that life will never be the same. Our social life got affected and here at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe and many other cultural institutions in Africa, this was a shock to our life. Our preparedness was tested and our online visibility was not in place and we had to fight, fight a fight. 
National Gallery of Zimbabwe Harare conversation was to be organized online. The idea of an online visibility became a new reality and with limited funds, we had to create this platform. As the new executive director appointed in September, 2020, I was confront confronted with this new reality from March when I was in an acting capacity. Up to the present day, myself and my team, we are faced with the reality to rethink, reflect and redesign our programming. A Cuban artist's solo exhibition entitled Point of View was supposed, was supposed to open early March, but we could not. It remained in quarantine until November 2020, and we closed the gallery until January 2021. We just took down the exhibition on the 26th of March 2020. It is an exhibition that had spent more months in the quarantine and few months only viewed by the public. Artists whose shows cancelled are still nourishing the, the, the pain and trying to recover is a challenge and some have adjusted to the online platform. In my own opinion, the resilience of African artists got tested and it remains my hope that we will be able to rise up. As the biggest cultural institution in Zimbabwe, we are mobilizing resources to boost our online visibility and working with artists as well. Our current exhibition, Zimbabwe at 41, is from our permanent collection. As a gallery with a huge permanent collection, we have to make our collection work for us in these challenging times. Now, I give the floor to Mr. Mehdi Kodbi, who is the president of the National Foundation of the Museums of Morocco. Mr. Kodbi. Sharing culture is what we aim for at the National Foundation of Museum of Morocco. And in parallel, our actions on a daily basis. During the COVID-19 outbreak lockdown, measures have been deployed and almost all museums around the world were closed. As a reaction to this unprecedented situation, the National Foundation of Museum had spared no effort to keep close and in touch with the audience by incrementing it, its digital activists. This approach enables used to enhance the museum as culture and educational assets for every home. Among actions taken to serve that purpose, we maintain it a garden trade on our social network by posting in the way the range culture, cultural content covered, covering focus on paintings, educational games, contests, but also streaming of Moroccan classical movies. Even when the Moroccan Museum were forced to close their doors due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the National Foundation took actions in order to share the national collections with the world and the women engaged with the audience during lockdown by creating the hashtag Le Musée à la Maison. This approach helped use to fulfill 
the educational and informative objectives through throughout digital content that neglected some of our best national and international exhibitions. It is certain that the impact of the pandemic and the damage that has caused far exceed our expectations. It's why museums are urged to erect in these strategies by offering innovative and creative solutions in an air of social distancing to answer the safety and comfort of the visitors and staff will continue continuing to serve this mission by offering unique and immersive experience. It is time to hear Blessing B. Azubike, curator from Nigeria. One. My name is Blessing B. Azubike. I'm a cultural producer and an arts manager from Nigeria in West Africa. 2020 was a challenging year for everyone. Artists and cultural organizations around the world were hard hit by the pandemic and presently 2021, the world is still trying to get back to normalcy. Late 2019, just a few months before the pandemic hit, I had started the Artist Ladder, an initiative for support opportunities, education and career advancement for artists and creatives. Um, when I started the Artist Ladder, just a few months after the pandemic hit, and there were curfews in various cities and countries around the world. And here in Nigeria, a 14 day curfew was imposed on the cities of Lagos, Ogun, and Abuja. It kicked off on Monday, the 30th of March, and was on through Monday, the 13th of April, 2020. And I wondered how we were supposed to go two months, or two, sorry, two weeks doing nothing. So I came up with the Artist Ladder 14 day art diary. Through this project, I worked with uh, some Nigerian artists to document the th uh, their, their thoughts, excuse me, as well as events in their environment. And so um, the artists kept some sort of artistic diary by putting out thought-provoking work daily, which was shared on um, social media. It was an exciting two-week journey as we explored the creations of these artists regarding the pandemic and relating subjects. As regards the inspiration behind this project, I strongly believe that it is the job of the artist to be a witness in his time in history. Um, in my opinion, it isn't just enough to be an observer, no. You know, the work of an artist um, must reflect, interpret, and document the times. So in the confusion and uncertainty that enveloped the world with the entrance of the pandemic, people turned to political and religious leaders for hope and answers. And I kept saying to myself, why can't artists, you know, profile solutions or give hope in these times? You know, so this was what inspired the Artist Ladder 14 Day Art Diary. My vision um, was to see the artists dig deep into their hearts and intellect to come up with powerful messages to be expressed on their canvases or whatever medium they chose to express with. I knew that two weeks of staying home would become tiresome for everyone, so my desire was to keep the artist inspired and to create pure magic in form of art. In the first seven days, I let the artists soar with their ideas unguided. So, so long as they stuck to their agreed theme of documenting the stay at home exercise. But from the eighth day, um, we had varying themes still within the context of the pandemic, which guided the artists. Um, these themes were simple and very relatable yet thought provoking, like If I Were President, which was one of my favorite themes from the collection because for weeks there was an uproar on social media as Nigerians expected to be addressed by the president. Globally, it was also apparent that the current situation at the time, that is plunging economies, the viral spread and the shocking death tolls was leaving world leaders in a confused state. So my thinking was, if the tables were turned, 
what we what would we do better you know what would we do differently i was basically saying to the artist imagine that you were president if you wore the crown of leadership or bore the title president how would you bring hope in a trying time such as this what would you say to the people whom you lead and or you know what would you do differently there was also the i would hold your hand through this theme which was the artist saying i may not have all the answers nor the power to control or even put an end to all that is going on but through my work or through art i can hold your hand through the tragedy pain or fear that you feel another personal favorite was the theme who do you say you are which doubled as the self-portrait theme. My thoughts were that in that period of self-isolation, um, a lot of people seemed to honestly be meeting themselves for the first time. You know, before then, the world was in so much of a hurry. It was as though there was no stop button. When the pandemic hit, the world, um, sorry, when the pandemic hit the world unannounced, everything was forced to shut down for the first time. You know, um, many were able to hear themselves, see themselves, spend time with themselves. And it would seem that, you know, a lot of people were meeting themselves for the first time. So with this theme, the artist presented a self-portrait created by taking an inward look and giving a glimpse into what their reflection was like when they looked into that proverbial mirror. It was also rather interesting as artists usually would have others as their subjects or muses, but rarely ever themselves. And you could tell that a number of the artists struggled with this particular theme. In the end, some of these works were comforting and, you know, perhaps a ray of hope or sunshine during what may be termed a time of darkness. Other works were a bit like what I would call lamentations, you know, mirroring the conditions and echoing the experiences and thoughts of the populace. In general, the feedback was positive. The artists were thankful for the opportunity and I was glad that one of our goals for the project was achieved, which was to push the artists because ideally one piece could take weeks, you know, even months, some take years to complete. But these artists were pushed to create daily. They were also pushed to mentally task themselves to work within the scope of varying themes each day, as well as apply themselves to the interesting times we find ourselves. The project also also got some media attention. One of the top TV stations in the country featured the project and one particular newspaper article about the project gave the rather apt title, Where There Is Art, There Is Hope. A female artist who participated in the project gave me a call last week expressing her gratitude because the pieces she created during the Art Diary have continued to enjoy exposure and even win her cash prizes up until last month, which I found intriguing considering that the project happened a year ago. In 2020, everything got grounded due to the pandemic and the arts was especially hit, with festivals, concerts, exhibitions and the likes coming to a complete halt. The only solution at the time to keeping the arts running was digitally, so I'm honoured that the Artist Ladder 14 Day Art Diary was birthed and played its role as a way of keeping the arts running and relevant in these times, as well as helping the artists adjust to the new reality. We have with us one more gentleman, Mohammed Saudi. He is the artist from Egypt. Mr. Saudi, you are welcome. Please continue. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Saudi. I'm an Egyptian ceramic artist and uh, participate in uh, several uh, local and international exhibitions and symposiums uh, here in Egypt and in Serbia and in Poland and in Latvia and in Spain, Croatia, uh, Croatia. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for giving me uh, this opportunity to participate in my experience of working in a turbulent situation of coronavirus uh, surrounding us. I was nominated by uh, the Egyptian Ministry of Culture to open my second uh, solo exhibition in December uh, 2020. In the beginning, uh, the museum director informed me uh, that we have to take all possible uh, precautions to avoid infection uh, to encourage people who are interested in fine arts to attend the exhibitions, uh, such as reducing the attendance rate in the hall to 25 uh, and not allowing more than 10 people uh, to enter the exhibitions uh, hall uh, in the same time. Also, not serve uh, attendance any drinks or uh, desserts. Uh, it was 
maybe it was not so hard uh, to organize uh, the exhibitions uh, with this uh, precautions. However, the director prevented uh, any artwork pursues to be presented uh, to the attendants. I had to think uh, of other ways to solve this problem. Uh, the best way was that uh, visitors can obtain an electronic catalog by scanning a barcode by their mobile phones to download the, the catalog. Moreover, I sent uh, the catalog to all friends uh, who was interested but uh, afraid uh, of the visit. Another good idea also that I can advise people who are in uh, the process uh, of running such as an event is to make sponsored ads on uh, social media, uh, however it will cost uh, but will achieve high spread of artwork photos to ensure to reach the largest possible number uh, of people uh, interested in fine arts and also in new exhibitions. And thus you have been able to provide at least artwork photos for those who were interested but couldn't attend. There is another idea that I didn't implement but I think it is good, which is to uh, photograph the exhibitions uh, uh, with 3D panorama technique, which enabled the people to wander inside the exhibitions as if they had actually uh, visited it. In the near future I will give it uh, a try uh, as well, it would be great to uh, spread uh, my art uh, all over the world uh, without uh, traveling. On another hand, sure my artistic idea was somehow affected by the pandemic. The exhibition was called Soul Integration, uh, expressing the suffering of the human soul and how it, uh, it tries to heal at once. The suffering here is not uh, physical but uh, moral suffering. Uh, I expressed soul suffering by pandemic sculpture which are inspired by the movement of the human woman body that wriggles uh, from pain. Her body is full of wounds but she is trying to heal her wounds and uh, proceed in her life. I used various color symbols. Uh, symbolism uh, was used in, uh, in all works to express different emotions and feelings. The pandemic may have affected my philosophy a little, uh, but the main idea is a moral suffering and uh, not a physical suffering. Generally, I used to express soul suffering reflected by women body figures or houses also they always have been the main subject of my art uh, concerning the material I'm so much interesting to search and invent new ways uh, to form ceramic and glaze application uh, in my last solo exhibitions the sculpture work was ceramic stoneware uh, that was formed on metal structure after preparing a special ceramic body composition and a special mixture of the ceramic body as well to be thermally compatible with the metal structure during the firing. Uh, they were fired at temperature 1100 degree uh, and the cracks appears uh, after which the cracks was filled with glaze and fired again at temperature of 1050. This is all about uh, my this experience. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank you for your kind invitation, and I would like to all of, uh, people to uh, and, and and I would thank you uh, for your uh, kind listening. Uh, stay safe, be healthy. Goodbye. Dear audience and distinguished participants, I sincerely thank you for your attention on behalf of the organizers. Dear participants, it was a pleasure to listen to your analysis, hear new information and presentations as well as predictions for the times that will come after COVID-19 crisis. We have all learned something new and the passion for the African art is stronger 
in our hearts after this conference. Dear audience, thank you for following us on the YouTube channel of Core Media Communications. Many warm regards until the next conference is organized by Color Media Communications and the Museum of African Art in Belgrade. Thank you one more time and have a nice day.